one. So now we're live. That we're live. now we're live. Okay. <laughs> All righty then. Everybody, Craig is at fault. <laughs> it, it it is me. It is me. But uh, thank God. <clears throat> there we go. Let me post that on the screen. Uh, thank God uh, I was able to reboot in time because otherwise uh, I had the echo back in my ears and it was uh, quite miserable. It makes for a uh, an unpleasant experience. I am coming to you live 150 miles from the Arctic Circle, Fox, Alaska, and Michael is back in the U.S. Uh, I am. Hey. I am Las Vegas this time. Uh, so the next time, yeah, okay, I should be. Well, we'll see. We might be in Los Angeles next time. We got we got hair issues. Is that what you're telling me? No, here? yeah, I just don't. I don't. I don't want you giving me a hair, uh, giving me a hard time for my hair. Are you follically challenged? Uh, it is. It's it's grim up there, man. It's grim. <laughs> it's like a it's like a Vegas golf course in the middle of uh, summer. Oh, that is bad. All right, man. So are, I apologize. I got a got a hard stop because I told uh, our friend Jonathan Breezy. Um, we would be going over to his house, see his gorgeous little daughters. And I forgot I was talking with you. So, so we've that. got 30, 35 minutes before we have a hard stop. And we're going to hit this as quickly as we can. The uh, uh, rapid release. First, how do we define rapid release? I define it as when you are prepared to release your books, at least on a consistent time scale that you're not going to miss. And generally speaking, it has to be at least within 31 days or fewer between releases. And that, and that would be my, my uh, definition as well. 30 days because of that infamous 30 day mm -hmm. uh, cliff, which I, I have only seen it like once or twice. And that was a couple of years ago, but I release often enough that it, it doesn't come into play. Now you do lose visibility. So 30 days, is just a good time. It's also a good time to uh, engage the fans. So why? would you want to do a rapid release? It helps multiple times inside uh, Amazon. And what I found out when doing it is that you have not only the new release schedule where it's much easier to get on that list because there's fewer books inside the categories that you're shooting for. And then when it comes, when that book comes off, you know, whatever amount of time that you're doing in between releases, your next book is there. And we often say that, you know, one of the best ways to sell your first book is your most recent book or your most recent book sells your first book. So one of the things that we watched one time and I happened to do accidentally when I released it the first time is kind of like book one, seven days later, book two, you know, seven, or in my case, like nine days later, book three. And then it was like uh, three weeks later, book four. And by this time I was starting to, you know, book one, book two, book three, at some point, all three of them were still on the, the, the new release. So you not only were capturing a large portion of that mind share and that marketing, that visibility, which you can translate to discoverability, but you're also seeing it as you come off on that 30 day cliff, you come off of that one, but hopefully now you're high ranking or you're working towards your ranking to get on the regular list of the top hundred books. <clears throat> and that's uh, the visibility factor when people browse books, if there's a uh, number one new release, which is an added bonus, uh, and that's fairly recent, that orange banner that's over your book, it, it'll draw the eye. It'll draw the eye, and anything that Amazon can do to draw the eye to a book will help somebody click that book. Even if it's only one in a hundred, as people browse, they'll, they'll cruise on over and, and take a look. Uh, one other benefit I see from rapid release is people who think the book is pretty good as opposed to super fans. Super fans will wait as long as it takes for a book to come out and they'll, and they'll dive into your next one. But those who think it's it's good or pretty good will dive in if the next one is available readily. And that uh, I think is another benefit of rapid release because generally I, I think the vast majority of readers read one or two books a month. I mean, we've been targeting whale readers who read like a book a day and uh, we're feeding them a, a book a day <laughs> across multiple genres, but that's that's a different, that's a publishing company running a business as opposed to me all by myself publishing a book a month or a book every two months, uh, whatever it is. And in my, in my book on release strategies, I'm gonna put the bottom line right up front. And the bottom line is if you manage your reader expectations then you will be able to deliver to those expectations. Whether it's one book a year, 
don't tell them you'll give them a book a month and then only do a book a year. That, that is not a recipe for success. And if you tell them a book a month, then make sure you deliver a book a month. Uh, you can adjust that uh, uh, however you need to with your readers. So don't think you need to pull a, pull a Michael Anderley and publish uh, five books in a week or a book a book a month because that's it's it's realistic if you set up your business to do that way and if you manage your the reader expectations but when michael first started he published those first four books and then it was like a month uh three to four weeks in between all of the next ones yeah, but four to by five. the fourth <laughs> by by the fourth book he already had the readers hooked and this is one thing the rapid release i would only apply to about the first three books because after after people have read the third book, then you you have them hooked because now they've committed a certain block of their life to you and your story and probably are bought in. So if somebody has read your first three books, then managing their expectations for book four is a little easier. So that's the that's the why. It's to set that hook, get the people who are, hey, this was a good book, good enough even that then we'll get the next book because hey oh it's right there it's uh, next week sure I'll, I'll pick it up and take a look as opposed to i don't know when the next book is coming out and those readers will drift away uh connecting with them and finding them again is just as challenging as finding them in the first place so michael let's uh instead of me pontificating uh, uh, exponentially uh, uh judiciously <laughs> Um, what, what was your, what was <laughs> chicken neck going on here? Uh, you'll find out when you get old. Um, what was your best rapid release? The best one probably was going to be the Anima series, which was done last year. But one of the things that uh, allowed us to do well was just a, a massive spend on, on uh, advertising. If you take out the spend, then certainly Death Becomes or would have been the one that probably you know was the best. And it's the one that grabbed the people most from a character standpoint, where they engaged with the characters and they were ready for the next one. And it didn't matter how many other authors that I threw at them to keep them quiet in between writing them, they still came back for the next one. I think that there's many opportunities for people who write at a slower pace in order to be able to accomplish creating a lot one of the things you get with a rapid release and one of the reasons that I did it wasn't for any algorithms because I didn't know anything about that at the time. It was the fact that as a whale reader, whenever I looked at an author, I would look at how many books were out. And if they only had one or two books and those books were pretty far apart, I generally wasn't interested in getting started with that. I would just you know forget about them and hopefully I'll see them again in six months or a year. So with a rapid release, you get one, two, three. Now you have three books up there and perhaps you're issuing a pre-release notification for the next one, and the whale readers then are willing to give you more of a shot. So that was kind of my mindset when I did that. Even even uh, me in the old days, like five years ago, I was reading a book a, a week, so 50 books a year, and and I hated it when I'd, I'd get a book, even on a freebie, get the book, and then look for another book, and there's no other books available. It's like, okay, you're done, and I never come back to that author. It's not like, oh, hey, uh, let me uh, let me check out the next story where I can be disappointed after it ends and I can't get another book. So wait, uh, let me, great. Let me, let, me, let me clarify that. If you looked at it and you saw that they had four or five books and you were looking at the release dates and you saw that maybe they were three months apart or six months apart, I mean, would you give them a chance or no? I I would in that case. If, if I had enough to sate my desire to read and get into the story, the, it's, uh, it's sometimes... Uh, uh, like Amazon uh, does that, the, hey, get your free book as part of the Prime membership. Mm -hmm. And I used, to, I used to download all six and read all six because I've been a Prime member for, for a long time. And uh, I traveled a lot. And it's like, oh, what the hell? Get, get a free book. Why not? And, and I read one. And I'm like, hey, I, I kind of like this. I don't agree with his premise, but I want to see where he's going. So I went to get the next book. It wasn't out. Like, what the hell? How, how, why is Kindle pr pimping it for the, in the first place? Uh, and second, uh, there's no second book. Yeah, I didn't like it that much. So that's what that's how I came up with my theory of if people are kind of into your book, then they'll they'll go to the next one if they know when the next one's coming out. And that's managing reader expectations. I, I saw somebody post a question about about uh, minimal minimally viable. Uh, yeah, you can't rapid release three books 
and expect to, hey, look at this, all these readers. No, your first book has to sell. If you didn't sell your first book, the chance of your second and third book selling is 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 much, much lower. Uh, and the first book, I know I, I say I don't start advertising and really pushing until I have a third book out in the series. But that's I already know I have a core readership for that first book. When I first started, I didn't have that, but I still kept writing. And then that first book, now it became better and better with the more other stuff I wrote, which is bizarre because it's still first book. If I go back now, I'd say I really need to rewrite that. But I released those a month apart. And, and I had been the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. But by the time I got to the fourth one, the first book was now selling. So, But I already had a number of people that I trusted who were in the genre who read it and said it was okay, said it was a good story. And that, it, if, if you have nobody telling you that uh, after the first book that it was a good story, then it could be, it could be a difficult hill to climb to then rapid release. Uh, so even though I did rapid release, I got zero benefit from it from that first series because I, I didn't sell any of the first book. But since I kept releasing, I, I don't think I ever fell off a cliff because I never climbed the I never climbed on top of the cliff in the first place. <laughs> you, you just so, stumbled on the ground. Yeah, yeah. I just I was just crawling around long through broken glass, uh, uh, working for 18 cents an hour. I think my first 10 months, it came out to about 23 cents an hour I was earning for my time. <clears throat> that that has since increased. It's now, uh, it's now $2.23. So. Oh, that's really good. So let me, um, a couple of things. Uh, the, going back to the minimally viable product, that has to be a term that has been misconstrued so many different ways. And the reason that I coined it and I used it way back in the beginning is because I come from the IT realm. And IT Realm says that we create software. We're, we don't want to create Word version 11 right away. We create the software that solves the exact need we're trying to figure out if anyone wants to pay for. So what I did on those first books is I created enough to find out were there any readers for this story? And if so, what did they want? That doesn't give you the opportunity to say, well, the editing can suck or anything else. Now, mind you, my editing did suck, but that's a totally different story. Um, you know, you need some decent covers, and there's so many ways to get great <clears throat> covers now for less than 100 bucks a cover. And uh, so there's just w ways that you can move it and move it forward. I would, you know, I would do it differently now, obviously, if I was wiped out, so to speak, and, and knowing what I know, how would I go about doing it? Um, you know, on the editing side, if I didn't have the money to do edits, then I would use Grammarly and I would use some of the other products and I would you know, spend a little bit more time to find some of those things that I failed to find in the beginning. And then I would spend the money because now I know what to look for with a great cover. Now, we did some things in the beginning where we looked at how Hugh Howie and how Amazon actually pushed them out. And um, it was like, you know, release a book, seven days later, you release the second book, third, I think it's seven, Days later, you had third, then 14, 21, so on and so forth. For my personal um, experience, it's about 12 days that Amazon pushes you harder than everything else. Between 12 and 15 or 12 to 18, it drops pretty dramatically, and then it just keeps on going down by about day 28. And somewhere between 28 and 32, you're like, poof. If, you have, if your book isn't strong enough, it's gone. Amazon's done pushing you. So, you know, what they're trying to do is push you early to see, does anybody want this? And if you don't hit it correctly in the beginning, then that opportunity Amazon has given you is now wasted. And you, it's all on you, and you can do it. I mean, Craig, speak a little bit to when you took a hiatus from Terry Henry and went back to your own series to fix it, and then you came back. In, in, uh, in the... Uh my free trader series, okay, I blew that first month uh, and second and third. And, and But a lot of the comments said, this is young adult. I'm like, okay, hey, uh, in my reviews. So I, I didn't pull them, but what I did is I, I ran a, uh, a like a five-day free on the first book, 99 cent on the second book, and, and set up a bunch of promos for January of 2017 and, and put it into YA categories. I did all that ahead of time and, uh, and re-ran it. And it jumped way up. It it was it was way higher than it had ever been before, and and earned out. And then uh, I got a a, a bookbub feature deal on the the sequel to that series, and 
I got a uh, Amazon Prime on the first book in that series, and all of it combined. But that was at, that was a full year after I had I had already published it. So you can do it. I just gave it new life. Hey, here's book one, new life. But it took a lot of effort and marketing, and uh, and, and a little advertising to get there. And then once it got the Amazon Prime deal, then all life was good. That that series has made a, a lot of money. It's done well. <clears throat> but that's it's you kind of get a little extra at no cost when Amazon's pushing it that first 12 days. So yes, Animus, you threw a lot of money at it because you were trying to dive in and, and grab market share, which you did. And yeah. then uh uh, but your average Joe, say, say me, who's going in, and generally all I do is I, I uh, when I first release a book, I'll do an auto-target ad on it right away. On every single book I publish, I do auto-target ads and, uh, and let that run for a little bit. And then I'll start uh, refining the manual target ads based on some of the categories Amazon gives me, as well as maybe some of the reviews and try to leverage the good words and stuff that people, oh, hey, this is just like David Drake. Oh, hey, David Drake, cool. Let me put him on the, the manual target. And I, I saw a couple comments pop up on <clears throat> what's optimal release time in between. I will tell you it varies by genre. Some genres need quicker. I did a, a, a Space Western 18 days apart because at that time, 18 days was the cliff. It had, it had drawn in from 30 to about 18. So we, we released 12 episodes, every one eight day, 18 days apart. And that was okay. We kept them uh, and did okay. But Space Western, so it was an odd, uh, a little bit of an off genre. I just released uh, a military sci-fi. And these and those the Space Western were 30,000 words. The military sci-fi is 75 to 80,000 words. And I released the first five two weeks apart. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. The first one did pretty well, had a lot of arra uh, uh, swaps and, and uh, promotions set up. But then the second one was was uh, almost catastrophic in the read through. And I'm like, oh, my God. So by the time we hit five, yeah, the catastrophe, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, my God, this is a great series and it's not selling. Well, guess what? It picked up over time. Your military sci-fi readers can't read a 75,000 word book in two weeks. So they're more a book a month. Because what I'm seeing now is the second book, even though I released the first one back in January in uh, December, the end of de December, the second book is now picking up and the third book. So it's that was too quick. 75,000 word mill sci-fi every two weeks is too quick. So in that case, maybe every six weeks would have been better to gauge it and work it. Uh, maybe I, I still the first three a month apart and then the four and five, six weeks, two months apart. That would have been sufficient, but uh, we jammed it. I thought we'd own the market, but they didn't get to the books quickly enough. It was just one, and then finally working over to two. Read through is good now, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> but uh, it's still not where I, I originally wanted it. Uh, we've done generally, if you can handle it, one a month in the same series is, is decent. That works. You don't overwhelm people and you don't underwhelm people. Uh, even the most impatient can wait a month. Well, no, they can't wait a month. The most impatient can wait about four days, and then you start getting emails. Hey, when the next book's coming out? Four days. <laughs> Try, you know, same day. You, know, you, you do a release, and the next thing is like, where's the next one? Look, bastard. I, I just, you know, my fingers are bleeding here at the moment. Um, and, yeah, we, we can joke about how romances release every few hours, and you're probably pretty good if you have a good series. But, you know, you do have to handle what is your marketing. I mean, um, I, I, we spoke a lot in the beginning of 20 books related to the rapid release model. There's a lot of discussions related to it and it turned off a few people who realized they just can't write that fast. And, and unfortunately I think they believed then that was, you know, they're out of luck and that's not true. It is managing the expectations. If you stay engaged with your readers, then, you know, you're telling them every six weeks so people are getting happy. They're talking amongst themselves. You've got a Facebook group. You're in there daily. That's wonderful. However, if you're an individual who just wants to release ad hoc, you don't want to engage with your fans, you're going to have a very tough time. And you had better be pulling out some epic sized books. You know, something that we just, just tried releasing two days ago is instead of having three books ready, and then we would release them, you know, one day, and then a week later, and then two weeks later, 
we put them all in one book and released it. And uh, I look at it and I can see what the ranking is and we're making more money than our rank is facilitating because we don't have an issue between people dropping off between you know book one and book two, not in KU anyway. And well, for that matter, not even purchased. So, you know, we don't, I don't have an answer for that one yet, how that's going to play. I believe based on talking with people that are in epic fantasy, that when you, you know, you release a book that's 180,000 words, that, you know, the fans are a little bit more forgiving when it doesn't come right, right away. And so we need to manage those bad expectations. And, you know, we'll probably be two months between book one and book two of that series. <clears throat> The, the bottom line up front, managing reader expectations. So somebody asked a question about not, does it work for nonfic? I, I don't know. I have no experience with a rapid release of nonfic. Uh, I, I, I'm releasing once every year and a half when it comes to nonfiction. And, and it's it, it's very targeted, very specific. I I think if you're doing a motivational series of, uh, of, of lectures on, on, and publishing those, then possibly some kind of uh, uh, rapid release would work. But it all comes back to managing the reader expectations. What what can what do the readers need to stay on board with you and buy mm -hmm. that next book? That's the whole goal. You want you want them to to come on board and buy that next book. If they're all uh, whale readers, if you say, "Hey, I've got like like uh, I can tell people I have sixteen different series. One has uh, eleven books. One has uh, nine. One has five. So whale readers can look at me and say, "Yes, I can." That's good. I can, if I like it, I can read ten books worth, millions of words, and that's that's a an additional selling point. Millions, millions of words. <laughs> um, I I actually don't know where to go from there. So, <laughs> oh well. It, going back to the question about, um, even though we we dodged the question in general, the answer for rapid release is one, and then either between seven or fourteen days later. And then probably seven or 14 days later, 18, 21. And then once you wrapped up your series, 35 days later for a box set. We're testing right now where we're going to release the box set of the first four books on the day or really soon after the release of the fourth book. And the reason for that, we're looking at that rapid release of the box set is because so far, it looks like the readership for box sets and the readership for singles are a different readership. At least 10% might be overlapped. So we've been doing one right now where we've looked back and we've had a series that's been finished for 10 months. The box set is doing very well. And we look at the single books and we realize that we're only down maybe 10 to 15 percent uh, of loss for those first books versus, you know, the box set, what it's making. So we're going to test that as well. And, and everything changes. One of the things that sucks about our particular profession, whatever you know, this month is going to be out of date potentially in three months. One of the things that's great about this is whatever you know now is going to be out of date in three months. And if you're paying attention, you now have a decided advantage over others. So unfortunately, I hope you really love the business. And if you don't, connect in with a group of people who do, whether that's someone like LMBPN or Shadow Mountain Press or Craig Martell Inc. You know, what the hell is your name? The most imaginative. That is it, that is it Craig Martell Inc. I, I I didn't even do CMI. I, I wasn't that uh, creative. So your your naming of your company is explicitly the same as your covers. It, it is. And is that cool or what? Because then I don't have to do a, a phony name uh, registration. So I save uh, 35 bucks. That's yeah. I have nowhere to go with that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. The uh, <clears throat> Uh, rapid release. I, I would say that I have achieved far better results through rapid release uh, and rapid release as defined in, in of a three month period. I released three books. So one I released one 30 days later, release two 30 days later, release three. So over 61 days, I'll release three books. That is that has never hurt me. Let me say that it has never oh. hurt me. Yeah, look, going back to the Animus series, I can say that we stumbled horribly. So we have the first three books ready to go, and we made a killing on those first three books. And and it's really exciting because, you know, you release them, then the second one comes out, and you were making okay money on the first one, so you're making pretty decent money, and the third one comes out, and provided, obviously, the, the, the story hits. And all of a sudden, you're making killer money 
And, you know, that helps buoy you or, 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 you know, helps you through creating the next book, which is usually not done at that time. But between three and four, we stumbled. We, we were late a few weeks and it showed in our income. And then we were really late for book five. And, you know, our, our sell through sucks. So if you're going to do it, know the size of your trilogy, quadrilogy, whatever, and know that you're going to be able to accomplish it because we, we <clears> lost <throat> Yeah, the uh, I I would say the far and away the best uh, rapid release we had for me uh, when we did the Terry Henry Walton Chronicles, we did the first book which which was okay. I mean it made uh, uh, two or three grand in the first week, and uh, then three weeks later we released book two which was only fifty one thousand words. It wasn't a long story, and then like two weeks after that we released book three. So over the course of five weeks, we released the three books, and then the, it really took off. And with each new release, because we watched it, it was a perfect stair step. With the uh, the first one, it went up and then started coming back down. Second one, it went up, didn't come back. It went up farther, did came down just a little bit. Third one, it went up and kind of stayed up. Fourth one came up and it kept climbing. And uh, we released the tenth book in that series at the nine month point. So after nine months, we did all 10 books, uh, 750,000 words. I only had the first two written when we re when we released the first book. And so I, I jammed, I mean, I jammed because that series, there's nothing like uh, success to uh, uh, make you drive for more success. And it made me wanna write the next book because uh, the fans were, were happy. They enjoyed the story. Uh, and they convinced other people to buy the books and uh, and that series has done uh, done very very well. It's a, a quarter of a million dollar series uh, for us so far, and still doing well. We we released the box set of the first six books. The last four are longer than the first six, so the last four I had to uh, try to wrap up this uh, monumental <laughs> story, and uh, and they got quite long. So what are you uh, so so what you're saying that if someone says, "Hey, I've got 150 years, I need you to write," you no know, is can the you, answer. And, 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 oh yeah, it should take about four books. I think that was part of the conversation too. <laughs> and, and, and by book four, I had covered like 10 years. I said, we're, we're in, we're in trouble. <laughs> we aren't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it, but uh, I mean, keeping the fans happy, once you manage those expectations, it was easy because I liked the characters and uh, I enjoyed the story and we had something a little bit unique in each one and, uh, and the reviews, uh, I think we're at 175 reviews or something on the first book. And the 10th book, we ha are at like 150 reviews on the 10th book. So it showed, even though they dropped down in between, the readers came back and said, thank you. It was a good series. And that's also when you're setting that expectation and managing the expectations with your readers, make sure that uh, you keep going to a finishing point. You let them finish the series. Don't leave them hanging, their, their ass hanging out because they, be, uh, they won't be digging that because they don't want to start a series that, that doesn't get ended. And uh, uh, I've ended, I think, three series so far. And and it's a good thing. The readers know they've come on board. They're going to go through it and end on a natural ending point, even though you could continue if you wanted. And that's, uh, once again, managing reader expectations. Don't leave them hanging out there because uh, they, uh, they, they won't like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... Rapid release, I think in essence, yes, it is by genre. You can ask around for that situation. We've explained the the cliffs. You can ask for people in your genre if they also see like we see in the sci-fi urban fantasy where you have about 12 days before it kind of starts coming down, 18 to 21 is another drop. And then it, you know, it peters out at, at 28 to 35 days and trying to stay on that new list because there's there's fewer competition for that. So you that's one yep. of the reasons that we try to stay within 30 days and be on that list because of the visibility and if the competition's a lot less for you to get that orange tag. Uh, Amazon has delivered a lot of new categories. Take a look to see what they are. I know that uh, Kalytics, I think, was on SPF maybe a couple of weeks ago, so Mark Dawson's uh, SPF podcast. And they and just did one on box sets as well. They did an analysis of box sets. Okay, so you know we have those that are going on. And in general, it is a very solid, but we have had experiences, Martha Carr can speak to this, where some genres, it does not work. She tried it in Mystery Thriller, where that genre was kind of expecting you to have a conclusion within one book, and she broke it across six. 
not so much a good result. So, you know, it doesn't, it's not a magical bean whatsoever. And somebody asked a question about uh, if you have the, the, the reader magnet, a newsletter sequel, a pre story, mm -hmm. and then three books, is that good for rapid release? Well, the, the prequel for that reader magnet is giving you the email. So I think there's, you know, I, I would do that four to six weeks minimum just because you want enough emails to get involved to release that first book. So I think so. You know, I, I would definitely suggest it. And, and you can write it after the fact as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, And I know Michael addressed it with his uh, the minimum viable product. One thing that I skipped over is I have an insider team that reads everything I have as I'm writing it. I'll, uh, I'll drop 20,000 words, 30,000 words, so I know that the story is okay. So it's okay to stockpile books, but uh, a couple of my co-authors, uh, uh, you, you write the books, we're stockpiling them, ready to uh, for a, a once a month release. And, and uh, one of them said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of money. <laughs> it's been, so I offered to pay advanced royalties and, uh, and the co-author didn't want to have, uh, didn't want to do that. So no, I'll wait. But the fourth book is going to be a while so because I, I need to go get a job just something to do so that's there's a drawback of uh, stockpiling because some people do that are wondering about that so first you got to make sure your first book is good enough and and will be able to sell it and that's I have that advantage with the insider team that Michael helped me build uh, 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 two and a half years ago <clears throat> but uh, having people and not family but family if they read the same genre as you like my brother loves sci-fi. He's read thousands and thousands. So I would trust him, his opinion, but I wouldn't trust my dad. He he is great with Westerns and mysteries, but he's not so great with uh, with sci-fi, even though he reads it. I mean, he's a trooper. He's my biggest fan, but uh, uh, I, I'm not sure he said it's good or not good uh, 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 if I go with that. So rapid release. First and foremost, manage your reader expectations. Uh, don't tell them it's yeah. going to be a month and then give them a book three months down the road. If you don't know for sure, don't say anything. Uh, uh, better hey, uh, uh, what? We, under promise and over deliver. Yeah. So Shane Silvers has mentioned on podcasts before, you know, he's he's basically a seven figure author and he releases every six weeks. So that's mm -hmm. outside even what we're doing. So always take everything we say with that hashtag. Probably everybody yeah. can make something work. Even with one book a year, you can make something work. You just have to come at it from a different way. And, and we even pitched exactly. where one guy had one book like every eight years and you know was still successful so there's hope and we'll have people talking in vegas one uh, releases a, a book a year and uh, over the course of the two years that those three books has made over a hundred thousand dollars so uh, i mean good it's uh, it allows for a lot of other things uh anybody who thinks that we're pushing you have to publish 20 books in a year uh, didn't get the message right from what 20 books to 50k means yeah, and uh, uh, that's uh, that's about it. We're out of time, unfortunately, because uh, Michael has to go uh, uh, meet a prior commitment. Because uh, yes. when we make a promise, like we make a promise to our readers, we want to deliver. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, guy. Thank you, everyone. Hey. Thank you, Craig, for making this thing happen. And thank you, everyone. Peace, fellow London, London, who came up and say hi. Came up, came up, came up and said hi. And anyway, and we'll see you all in uh, Edinburgh. That's right. Talk to you later. Out here.